What's up everybody, welcome back to Overvolted and today we've got a project. This project is a Razor scooter that no longer works. If you have one of those or are getting one for cheap online and trying to refurbish it, we're gonna go through some of the steps you need to take to get it back on the road. All right, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this specific model, the PowerCore model from Razer. If you have any scooter or any electric powered device like this, these are gonna be the main steps you wanna to do to get it back on the road and make sure everything's functional. This scooter seems to have a problem not getting power to the motor. So we're just gonna look over everything from start to finish to see what needs to be fixed. Power for these things starts at the wall, so we might as well start there too. This specific charger has a little light uh, that will light up to make sure it's charging, so that's a good, decent sign that it might be functional if you plug it in and you have a light. But we're we're gonna go ahead and check the levels with a multimeter and just make sure everything's looking okay. To test this, we're gonna put the positive into the middle connector and just touch the outside of the barrel jack with the negative. And this one's reading actually at 14 volts, which is what you want. You want it a little over 12 volts so it can actually charge up a 12 volt system like this scooter. If your charger was not producing a little above the voltage of whatever system you have here, then that is gonna be an issue and you're gonna to need to replace your charger. For our case, we're gonna keep on going and we're gonna to start to tear down this scooter. For this one, on the top of it, it's just got four screws holding it on, which seems to be not quite enough because it just bows up on the plastic. And it's off. Let's see what's inside. So here is our 12 volt battery for this scooter and this looks like a little electronic motor controller. All right, next step, we want to test this battery. So we are gonna just unplug everything, disconnect it all, and we'll get this battery on a charger and see if it holds charge. To unplug these connectors, they're super easy. They only go in one way and come out one way. You push down the little tab on the top, and there you are. There's our battery. And now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna do another quick visual inspection here and just make sure there's nothing that's not fully seated or disconnected. That's where the battery is plugged in. Everything else is looking pretty good. Oh, you can see down there that middle connection is actually a little bit pulled out. I'm not sure if that was part of the problem or not, but we're gonna keep going and test everything before getting it back on the road. All right, so we're still on the battery, and while we have it out of the system, the first check you wanna do on it is just to check its voltage. It's a 12 volt battery, and very similarly should be showing a little higher than that when it's fully charged, and a little lower than that when it's not charged. But we should be around that 12 volt range. Ooh, that's not looking good. 3.44 volts. So it is pretty low. Let's get this on a charger and see if we can get it to hold a charge. This thing is not holding a charge. So we're gonna take it apart and see if we need to refill it with some distilled water to get it back in business. Of course, at this point, you could just go online and order a new battery, maybe even a lithium powered one, and replace this little 12 volt battery. But I'm gonna see if I can get this thing up and running without doing that. So the plan now that we have all of these off is to fill it up with distilled water in all these holes, make sure they're all nice and level, put those back on, remount the top plate and give it a charge to see if it holds it. All right, so even this tiny little funnel is too big for this. So I'm gonna see if I can make a quick modification by putting a little piece of shrink tubing over the end of this, cutting it to length and heating it up. Grab it on the end of that and then heat up this other end, make it really small. Look at that, it worked. A couple of these were pretty full and now they're all just topped off and even. I brought it back down here and it gave a chance for the bubbles to rise to the top in these six little ports. And then I ended up filling them up again with this little syringe out of like a children's Tylenol bottle or something and it was so much easier than doing it with a funnel. So if you're doing this, just go ahead and get one of these little syringes and you're able to top them off and kind of pop the bubbles with the tip of it so you can make sure you fill them all the way up. If you don't have one of these and you're giving your kids a scooter, you're gonna need some children's Tylenol. So go to the store, get some of that, and then you'll have one. This is nicely filled and topped off. It is on the charger in maintenance mode. You can see it says repair up there and it's currently not taking any amps, but hopefully after a night of doing this, it will be back in business. All right, it's now a new day and yes, I did get a haircut, thank you for noticing. So after 24 hours of trying to recover this battery, 
it still didn't hold a charge. And in fact, one of the cells started ballooning out and expanding and even buckled the top of the battery and distorted the shape of the plastic. It was getting so hot. And so I decided to not continue forward with that battery because explosions are just not as fun as they sound. I'm kidding, they're exactly as fun as they sound, but I didn't want to do it inside. I've abandoned this battery. It's gone in the trash. Well, it, it will be disposed of properly, don't you worry. And we're just gonna have to replace the battery with this. This is probably more in line with what you would do at home anyway. If, uh, if your battery's bad, get a new one. So, I ordered a new one, relatively cheap. This will actually be better for a couple reasons. This is not a sealed lead acid battery like the first one. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is pretty much better in every way. Safer, lighter, holds a charge longer, more cycles, that sort of stuff. And they feel drastically different weight. All right, so one thing we're gonna need to do is pull off this connector off of the old battery or cut off the connector off the old battery. And we're gonna put some new connections onto this new one. Ha! <laughs> Squeezed. Got him. Look at that, so nice. Take a look at that, so beautiful. I'll include a link to this battery, of course, in the description if you wanna replace yours with the same or a similar one. Reconnect the connector. I think nine times out of 10, when you do one of these repairs, it's gonna be the battery. It is possible that it's the motor in the back that's blown or it's the speed controller that sits in between the two. If you replace the battery and it doesn't work, you can test the voltages both going to the motor and even coming from the motor if you spin the motor manually back up the two leads that travel across the bottom of this plate. So with your multimeter, you can pretty much figure out what side of the equation your problem's on. Two short screws in the front and two longer screws at the back. All right, so we're out in nature now and this thing looks nice and shiny and clean. Let's turn it on. It lights up, very nice. And let's see if it works. Okay, how am I gonna hold this? All right, let's try this out. Little kick, oh yeah, it's going. And it fits me so well. Oh, you fell down. Maybe I should get a real tripod instead of a stick. <laughs>